This short presentation will guide you through your first use of a key library in C++ called math.h. C++ has some built-in math operations that we practiced in our program called math.cpp. They included addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division for all numbers, and modulus to find remainder for integers. Here are some examples of simple functions from math.h that we will use on a regular basis. The first one finds the absolute value of, a, of an integer. In this case, the integer x would be equal to the absolute value of y. In the second example, the decimal number x, float x, would be equal to the absolute value of y, where y would also be a float or decimal number. We'll often use the square root function. In this case, x, which would be a double, is equal to the square root of y, which would also be a double. And finally, the fourth example shows us how we might raise y to the fourth power and assign that value to the double variable x. Okay, stop for a moment and place these in your notes. Now we're ready to continue. The first use of math.h will be in two specific programs. First, we need to find radius squared when we're looking at the area of a circle. We can use the POW function from math.h for that purpose. We'll also be using the POW function as well as the square root function when we build our Pythagorean theorem program. We know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so if we're given a and b, we can use the POW function for finding the value of a squared and b squared, and then we can use the square root function to find the value of c. There are many different functions and math capabilities built into math.h. For example, we could use trigonometric functions for sine, cosine, tangent, or the arc sine, arc cosine, or arc tangent. We'll use those at a later time. For now, we'll highlight some of those key ones that simply involve looking at how we might use them with numbers. For example, seal of x is short for the ceiling of x. What it does is it rounds up to the next whole number. Floor x okay, would do something similar except it would round down to the next lower whole number. We could use these on double variables to find out what the next integer would be, either above or below the decimal number that we have. There's another one that has a built-in capability to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle called hypot a comma b, where a and b are double values that represent the legs of a right triangle. Now, I know this is in there and I know we can do it, but we will use POW and square root for our Pythagorean theorem on the first go. We can also find a power of 10 to a given power. In other words, POW 10 with x in the parentheses would calculate 10 to the power x where x is greater than or equal to 0. And it would allow us to find a power of 10 to any whole number, like 10 squared, 10 cubed, and so on. The last one we'll highlight, because it might come in handy from time to time, is the f mod x comma y. Now, this returns a floating point remainder of x divided by y much in the same way that we used modulus on whole numbers. y cannot be zero. Now remember, modulus only worked when we were dealing with whole numbers. You might find from time to time that you want to know the whole number remainder when we divide a floating point x by another floating point y. 
Okay. We'll practice that at some later time after we master the basics. Okay, that's it. You might want to check out the website referenced on this particular slide and see for yourself that there are quite a few different math.h operations. What we'll do now is we will use our new math.h capabilities by looking at the slide previous to this one and using power of a number and square root to do two things. We'll make a program called circle where we find the area and circumference of a circle and when we want to use radius squared we'll use the POW or power of a number function for math.h. The second program that we will build will be a Pythagorean theorem program called pythag.cpp where your program requires you to enter A, enter B, and calculate C. When, you're completing, when you've completed that program, you'll then build a third program called pythagac.cpp where you will enter the leg of a triangle, the hypotenuse of the same triangle, and then calculate the missing leg. Okay, after you've completed your notes, get them checked off and begin your programs.